I look rather refreshed for someone that's quite sleep deprived. <laughs> I I can just feel myself already going like talking with my hands because I've just done my nails. This was my little treat to myself. I bought myself a nail kit where I can just do manicures at home and it should last a couple weeks. Um, I'm very happy with myself considering obviously the wilderness I was as bare bones as bare bones as bare bones like couldn't even afford food let alone getting my nails done um, and looking presentable like affording to look presentable yet today I just really pulled myself together the Holy Spirit actually encouraged me to do it while God told me to do it. And I'm like quite conflicted because, you know, there's a side of me that I'm recognizing as I'm starting to go out there and do things for myself and starting to pull myself together and all that kind of stuff. I'm addressing these feelings of unworthiness, like, oh, I shouldn't be buying this for myself. I shouldn't be looking after myself. I should be giving away to others. I should be doing something for others. And... God's like, no, you need to look after yourself as well. You need to actually put effort into yourself as well. And for me to be aware that I'm starting to have these thoughts and where I got into this pattern in the wilderness to just forego myself and not put so much effort into who I am and my appearance and taking care of my body and all that kind of stuff. It's really surprising to relearn this whole taking care of myself and actually nurturing my body and actually putting care into my appearance and all that kind of stuff again. It's interesting. I never thought that I'd actually be going through this point in my life because prior to the wilderness, I was very much all about getting my hair done. I was very much about having my nails done. I had my face full of makeup most times when I left the house. I was a princess. I was a doll. And I was very proud of it, truthfully. I really did enjoy making myself all dollied up and looking like a doll. And so now I'm relearning these things and God's encouraging me to put in the effort and encouraging me to go and do the pretty things for myself. And so it's just odd the loops that my mind is going through just to do the stuff again because there's a part of me that's just like oh am I getting all vain am I getting all conceited and all that kind of stuff by putting all this effort into my parents again but God's saying no you actually enjoy these times like when I was doing my nails tonight I had no music on, nothing at all. I was just doing my nails and I just found it so enjoyable just doing my nails. Same thing when I do my makeup. I just find it so enjoyable doing the process. I just enjoy the layers and I enjoy the blending and the whole process of it all and watching the transformation. And so it's quite a learning process and I feel as though I should articulate it, especially when I'm in a better frame of mind and have had some decent sleep. Because last night I got maybe an hour's sleep and the reason for that is I have been working so much. I will literally be up at 4.30 in the morning for the cafe job and then I will on other days finish my day at 3 a.m. in the morning with the bartending job and 
I am working at least 40 hours a week. And that's just on these part-time jobs. So that's not including the businesses and stuff that God has given me. And so the thing is, as far as things in the spiritual realm go and as far as things as self-reflection and as far as things as like unpacking and leaving my troubles at the feet of God and all that kind of stuff, I just have let that slide by the wayside because I haven't even had time to sleep. There have been times where I will be walking home from the bartending shift, praying in tongues out loud as I'm walking through these streets. <laughs> and I remember there was this couple that were sitting there in the dark and doing nothing dodgy, just sitting there, you know, just whatever. And I walked past them and I was praying in tongues and I realized there was there were people there and it was like, oh, what is? <laughs> just keep walking, praying in tongues. Because obviously my soul and my spirit, every single part of me is definitely, definitely feeling it. And something that was odd was that this whole unpacking and this refining process that God is doing with me, with me I had let it go by the wayside so much to the point where I began to lose my eyesight. So it was fascinating because I was like, not only am I becoming more blind to the spiritual realm, like my spiritual eyes aren't seeing very clearly anymore because this whole refining process is getting pushed aside by life because I literally just don't have the time to do it. Because usually I would prefer to sit alone for at least an hour or two every day with God and just go through it with him. But I haven't been able to because I've literally just been all over the place doing all this working on jobs and all that kind of stuff. Um, but when I started losing my eyesight, it was bizarre because, yeah, can't see in the spiritual realm. And then it gets so much to the point where you just can't even see in the physical realm either. I was like, this is, this is a new learning experience, isn't it? And last night, I got towards the end of my day and I was just like absolutely conked. And just I was like, I need to sleep. Like I was physically tired. But my spirit and my soul were like, no, you cannot sleep. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit actually told me last night that if I do not address this stuff, then my eyesight will definitely be shot for today that I won't even be able to go anywhere at all. I literally will be blind for today, which it has happened in the past. Where, um, but this was just like a very, it has happened in the past when I've just had very intense spiritual warfare all of a sudden, where I'll lose my eyesight for a few hours. But this one has been like a good two thirds of my eyesight has been gone for a, a couple weeks. And so the Holy Spirit was like, your eyesight's definitely going to be gone tomorrow, 100%, if you do not address this. And so I lay there in bed, warring in the spirit and doing soul refining and just kept going and 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 going until I literally just could not go anymore as in like I just passed out and it was maybe an hour 
that I got of rest. And then when I was at work, I kept having this thought like, oh, I got to try and get through this day. I had an eight and a half hour day at work. And I was just like, fearing, make, I was like worrying about messing up orders. I was worrying about doing all these things wrong. I was worrying and worrying and worrying. And then the Holy Spirit was like, can you hear yourself? And I was like, ah, I realized that I was actually operating in fear. And the thing is that the, I was operating in this fear and it isn't something new. I used to actually operate in this fear years ago when I was in the hospitality industry or when I was actually in the conventional workforce and I had just been in this state of worrying and thinking, oh, what if that happens? What if this happens? What if, and like just always trying to be 10 steps ahead to cancel out all the problems and being a worry wart, worrying for worrying sake. And it was just my, my baseline of how I went about my day. But I, I was more conscious of it because I was so exhausted and I needed every shred of strength that I could find to get through this day. And that is when I realized that I'm actually operating in fear as a baseline as I go throughout my day on average when I'm in the workforce and I've been doing it my whole working life pretty much and obviously fear is the opposite of faith but fear is putting faith in the kingdom of the enemy and so when I realized that I was actually putting faith in the kingdom of the enemy by operating in this negative space, I repented, turned to God, and I'm like, Lord, please forgive me. I choose faith. And I know that you promised me that you've sent me here. And when you've sent me to do something, it will all turn out for your good. And you've got me. And so I chose faith. And the day just turned around instantly. And I just had all this energy. I had a great day. I then got home and was doing my prayer time with God and all that kind of stuff. Had my eyes closed, just worshipping. And it was just so relieving beyond words to just be able to come home and be like no tonight I'm going to spend this time with God I'm going to be listening to God I'm going to be really just in his presence and I don't have words to describe the amount of relief and the amount of soothing and the amount of relaxation that I had in that moment that I actually fell asleep <laughs> yeah and I was just like I like as I was worshiping I was just like seeing visions obviously as you do and then I was like hang on no that's a dream I'm actually dreaming and so I just like snapped out and just like sorry lord and then the holy spirit was like no you can actually sleep I'm going to continue to talk to you as you take a nap and so yeah I took a nap had while the worship music was playing in the background and the Holy Spirit actually revealed to me and was speaking to me about how I need to start um, pulling myself together and getting myself dollied up again because he said he's going to be bringing my man along very sometime soon and so obviously I need to get myself prepared as much as I'd love this ideal of being like he's gonna love me in my track pants and he's gotta you know just love me and all that kind of stuff like 
let's be practical. Men have eyes. And I, if there's one person in this whole entire world that I want to look good for, that I want to look lush for, it is my man. <laughs> that is the only one person that I care about actually, you know, wanting to look good for. And so the Holy Spirit was telling me, you need to get yourself in order, start putting effort into your appearance, start tying yourself together and put some effort into your hair. <laughs> After I like just cut it off, like hack, hacked it off <laughs> two weeks ago, but it was just so, it's so nice because I feel as though I'm shedding an old dusty skin and it's like butterfly, I'm a beautiful butterfly <laughs> because I've got acne scars, my nails I hate to say it, but they were actually dyed a brownish gray color because of the coffee and like all the cleaning and all that kind of stuff. And so for me to just really pamper my hands tonight, I really, really, really needed that. Like these were some working hands. I was looking at my hands today and like the veins were just like veining. And <laughs> like, hang on, can, uh, like the veins were just like really popping today and covered in coffee stains and all that kind of stuff. I was just like, these are just not the most feminine and welcoming hands. Like, these are not hands that you would want anywhere near you. But, yes, remember when I said in an earlier vlog, and if you don't remember, go back and watch my earlier vlogs, but, <laughs> I said how I wanted to get laser hair removal when I could financially do so. That's because I was getting a moustache. Well, lo and behold, a couple weeks ago, things have gone, gone from bad to worse. Because I used to get like a, a few like really like strong hairs that were just like really coarse. But then I'd tweeze them out. And then a couple weeks ago, I look in the mirror and I'm like... It's like migrated. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, all I need now is for it to connect to my nose and it's like a hardcore moustache. <laughs> uh, it's the truth, okay? Like, it is what it is. My dad has got like the hairy ancestral genes of a Scotsman. And then my mum has got black hair. So I got a lot of hair and it's black, okay? It's... It is what it is. And so <laughs> I was tweezing and shaving, but then I was getting like a five o'clock shadow. But now <laughs> I'm starting to get like hyperpigmentation from the amount of tweezing I'm doing. And I looked in the mirror the other day and I was like, I literally just have like a hyperpigmentation moustache. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can, I'm like, lo and behold, of course. It decides not to show up that well when I'm trying to show it. But sometimes I'll walk past my reflection or I'll look in the mirror and I'll be like, I look like a young man <laughs> with a moustache. I was like, well, I'd be a good looking dude, but <laughs> you know what? I miss too much. I joke too much. Or am I joking? I don't know. I'm just deliriously tired. I've had like an hour and 40 minutes sleep in the past 24 hours. Anyway. So, it's quite fascinating because I'm back in the gym. So I'm working on my body. I am um, doing my nails. And the Holy Spirit told me to go and buy that hair removal thing to get rid of all the barb wire that's growing and now I'm gonna look at what kind of oils and stuff for my hair because 
uh, I'm gonna be one of those girls but like you can see there's like some texture to it when I wake up in the morning sometimes after having just showered the night before I don't dry my hair before I go to sleep I just let my hair like chill over the pillow as I sleep and when I wake up there are like ringlets and stuff and so my hair actually looks great sometimes when I first wake up I'm like oh look at these tresses but I need to figure out what's going on with this because it's currently a poofy fluff ball and so I'm looking forward to nurturing my natural hair texture for the first time ever in my life I'm looking forward to lasering off my moustache and my sideburns I'm looking forward to lasering my legs and my armpits and uh, whatever else uh, and um, getting some retinol because I hate to admit it but your girl has been um, obviously my life hasn't been the easiest the past few years and it is showing on my skin and so I need to really look after my skin not something that I would love is like teeth recompositing apparently just like it just fixes the enamel or something on the front of your teeth because my teeth as I said I used to be a princess and so I used to get my teeth whitened and now my teeth are gone see-through they're like blue and see-through so I'll love to get that done but one step at a time whether I'll get that done or whether I won't I don't know I feel as though that's rather vain but it's something that I've always wanted. I've always wanted a knockout smile. Like I look at some of the smiles on people and I'm just like, that is an actually very aesthetic and beautiful smile. I have eyes and I like what I'm seeing with that smile. And so, you know, I'm being completely transparent. These are things that I would like. And Oh yes, <laughs> I now have only one bra, one trusty bra left that I bought nine years ago and it's somehow surviving. All the rest, the wiring has snapped and like all that kind of stuff and the elastic has given out but I've had one bra that has survived religiously and so it's time for a new wardrobe and all that kind of stuff it's so bizarre because obviously there I was struggling not even being able to afford food and now I'm at this point where it's like oh I can get clothes I can get laser hair removal I can get my nails done I can get hair products and my finances have gone from literally zero maybe I would get a loan of like four hundred dollars a week and now it has easily at least tripled I have found myself in a spot where I have more money than what I know what to do with it that's not to like brag about it but that's just to go and show my mindset where I was just so used to living without ever wanting anything and I'd shut down all these desires such as having a meal that I actually find and savor the flavor of and now where I'm like I don't actually find that much uh, fulfillment in a good meal anymore I don't actually find that much fulfillment in all these other things I only find my fulfillment in God truth be told and so now it's like I don't 
have the desire to buy all these things that I wanted before I went into the wilderness. And so now, since I know that I can't actually buy fulfillment and I know that it's all in God, I'm just like, well, what do I do with this money then? <laughs> but God has told me to build businesses and so I'm like, yeah, that's great. Businesses take a lot of money to build. And so I'm going to be getting a new wardrobe because my old wardrobe is daggy. Everything's worn out and I only have skinny jeans left with holes in them, which is so 2022, apparently. So not cool. I even see the reels where they're like mocking people that wear skinny jeans and I'm like, I'm just not cool, am I? So, <laughs> like, if I were trying to be cool, I definitely wouldn't be a prophet because a prophet goes against everything but <sighs> life is good things are looking up I'm on track God is here And I've been talking a lot. I'm going to share some more tomorrow. Hopefully. But. Yeah, I've definitely been talking a lot. I've obviously not done one of these in a while. And so I've got a lot to speak about. And then my tired brain is just like. Blah, 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 just like just jumping all over the place. But anyway. I'll leave it at that. And come back to more later. Bye.